Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about some crazy prices in terms of foils. So these cards are just outrageous given how expensive their non-foil is. A lot of this is due to EDH. Some of it, I believe it's due to modern for something like City of Brass. But let's go ahead and let's dive right in. We have, looks like nine cards to talk about. Braids. This is the blue version. I really did like Plane Shift because you recognize all these old characters and now Braids is blue instead of black and now you're not sacrificing stuff. You're putting stuff from your hand into play. So kind of like a creation type of Braids. Her foil is $38. Her regular is $2.79. I like this model a lot because it allows people so if you want to pay a lot of money for the foil and have a pimp version of it, go ahead. You're actually probably subsidizing the people who just buy the regular version. Next, a ghostly prison. And this one has seen a reprint. However, the foil is at a all time high. One interesting fact is the original foils do not really go down after a reprint. And this is even true if the reprint is a foil copy of it. The original always keeps value well, but it's only the original. So if there was like a second one, then that wouldn't keep value as well. Some cards are just very, very good in foil. This is one of them. Uh, anytime, one of the things that I look at is an EDH deck list. And I will look at EDH deck list and then compare them and see, hmm. All right, there's a lot of people playing Ghostly Prison. And is there any card like Ghostly Prison in foil, which you can get for cheap today? The next card, I'm not positive why. I think it's because of the Adrazi. It is very good. City of Brass. Very beautiful artwork. 7th edition foils have always been expensive. They were the first set with foils, I believe. I don't know. I mean, the first foil I ever got was Lightning Dragon, not Lightning Dragon. I think it was Lightning Dragon promo in Urza Saga. And I thought that was the coolest thing with the little stamp and aim and foil. I was like, yeah, this is just like Pokemon. At the same time, they were selling Pokemon first edition booster packs. So back in the old days, the good old times, right? Uh, you could, you had the choice between Urza Saga booster pack or a Pokemon first edition booster pack. Both were good. Both were good choices at the time. I wish I had more money instead of being, you know, a child and having like a $5 allowance every month. I should have worked harder. Like in, in hindsight, in retrospect, I should have got like some jobs. If I had known, like, I mean, come on, Pokemon First Edition just came out and then Urza Saga was still on these shelves and GameStop was selling both of them. So there was like plenty of them, like because every GameStop has boxes and boxes of them at the time. Anyway, let's get to something super obvious. This card is going to be good. It's like Philia, except its entry price is a lot higher. It's about $6 entry price. If you can, if it dips to 4 or $5 after rotation, that's a good entry price. You go in, you buy it, you hold it. One day it will be super valuable. This card is just insane. It is just something that uh, I look at. A lot of you like don't. Like there's some cards that I can look at and say, wow, that's really pushed. And then when I look at like I'm a cat, I'm like, huh, all right. I, I don't really see anything. Like Harsh Mentor, a lot of you were hyping up Harsh Mentor. I looked at it and it reminded me of like Ash Zealot, but not as good. And I know what happened to Ash Zealot, right? Is it Elyon of the Great Rebel? No, it's not. So this is a home run. Okay, so I, interesting story. Back in the invasion days, when we just began with foils, no one really realized how valuable they were. So the foil gap, uh, 71 cents to $21, is over 30 times, was that right? Wow, 3,000%. 30 times is the multiplier. And yeah, I mean, it's an okay card and a bird deck, right, if you're really into that but it will always have value. But back in that day, maybe the regular one's a quarter and then the foil one is like 50 or 75 cents. 
there was a discrepancy between the foil prices. Obviously, Brainstorm and Dark Ritual, like we didn't know they would discontinue printing them. So that's one of the reasons. But another reason is like, wow, we didn't have ED8s. So the foils were much less valuable. Like much less valuable because ED8s was not, there was no reason to pimp out. After it rotated, unless it could be played in Legacy, there was no reason to have the foil copy of it because actually people were trying to dump it at really, really cheap prices. Talking about foils I love and predict, I love predict. It is, in my opinion, one of the most beautiful cards in all of Magic. It has a very be uh, artist that draws fantastic, and I was there's some artwork I just like. Now this is one of them, and I collected these, and I think I've shown it on channel. I own like 40 copies, maybe more, and I do have a playset of foils, which I can tell you I didn't pay more than four dollars for, for at the time. Sometimes you just collect artwork and sometimes it works because you got lucky and most times it doesn't. So the same story with Force of Will, right? I really liked the artwork on Contagion. I was like, oh, there's a bat cat and it's like removal. Wow, this is like the best card ever. Why do you need a counter something? But in collecting, you accum I accumulated many Force of Wills. And actually, but I accumulated probably five times as many Contagions. Now, I've went back in time, I could be like, oh, well, that was obvious. Let me get Force of Wills and not Contagions. Uh, but Contagion is a black Force of Will, if you didn't know, but much, much worse. Like, much worse. Next, uh, Coastal Piracy. This foil is 20 bucks. 20 bucks. Wow. Again, back in the day, foils, especially foil uncommons, were just like, meh, who cares? The price difference was non-existent, like almost non maybe like two to one. Now it's like 30 to one, 20 to one, 10 to one. This one is a little less because it recently spiked up in price and it does have a reprint, but the reprint is a rare. So I'm, I'm sure that reprint is also expensive. I love this card. It's always been very good. Uh, the pirates make a lot of sense. That's probably why casually it's more appealing today than yesterday was because we're going into a pirate set. I'd assume. But anyway, next, let's talk about <laughs> Multiply. 10th edition, Mind Stone, 80 cents for a regular one with no movement, $50 all time high. What is that? What is that? That's like, a, what is that? That's more than 50 this is a 60 time, 60 plus time multiplier, 6,000 plus percent multiplier. That's insane. That's insane. I guarantee you when it came out, it was not even the code. It was maybe like a dollar or two as a foil. This would have been the most epic investment ever. Like, like if you had been, if you had pred predicted the Adrazi, and this is why it's so good, because it's so good in Adrazi, it doesn't have a downside. You actually need it to produce the one colorless. That's actually upside for it. So it's a stone that doesn't come in play tapped. Then you can sacrifice to draw a card when you're in late game. It's perfect for Adrazi decks. The absolute perfect mana acceleration. All right, let's talk about this card, Undo Cleric. This card has spiked a ton. I want to say like... 7,000 percent. That used to be a, like 50 cent foil or something. From Zendikar, whenever it or another ally enters the battlefield and you control, you may gain life equal to the number of allies you control. If you can bounce it, then you have a repeatable infinite life, uh, which is kind of nice, but it's not playable in EDH that way. So you might need another ally to bounce. Overall, good card. Not entirely positive why it's spiking so hard. It's a $7 foil up from like 50 cents or like 75 cents. So it's gone up 10,000%. No, yeah, 1,000%, sorry. These large numbers we're talking about, right? Uh, of these foil multipliers are just insane to me as someone who played Magic when foils first came out. They were looked at as a benefit, but not something that you would... Some people actually didn't want them. I remember my friends in middle school trading the foil copies for non-foil copies. Obviously, at that time, I knew that was a good deal. But because they didn't want it to warp, right? Again, people were playing without sleeves back then. 
So it actually made a big difference whether or not like you, the, the foil copy, if you left it in sunlight, it's not like today. Today you leave a card in sunlight, it will like just get destroyed. It will like set on, it will set itself on fire. But back in the past, you could have the foils were better quality in my opinion. They bent less, but they still bent. So there was always this assumption that you were cheating if you had your most powerful card or your land cards in foil. Because no one used leaves, right? So it was kind of obvious like, oh, hey, I see a little bend. That's probably land. Anyway, bye guys.